You heard the House manager speak for nearly 24 hours over three days. We don't anticipate using that much time. We don't believe that they have come anywhere close to meeting their burden for what they're asking you to do. In fact, we believe that when you hear the facts, and that's what we intend to cover today, the facts, you will find that the President did absolutely nothing wrong. They're asking you to remove President Trump from the ballot in an election that's occurring in approximately nine months. They're asking you to tear up all of the ballots across this country on your own initiative. Take that decision away from the American people. And I don't think they spent one minute of their 24 hours talking to you about the consequences of that for our country. Not one minute. They didn't tell you what that would mean for our country today, this year, and forever into our future. They're asking you to do something that no Senate has ever done. And they're asking you to do it with no evidence. The House managers in the presentation a couple of times referenced uh, this for that. Let me tell you something. This cost $32 million. This investigation took 2,800 subpoenas. This investigation had 500 search warrants. This had 230 orders for communication records. This had 500 witness interviews. All to reach the following conclusion, and I'm going to quote from the Mueller report itself. It can be found on page 173. As it relates to this whole matter of collusion and conspiracy, ultimately, these are the words of Bob Mueller in his report. This investigation did not establish that the campaign coordinated or conspired with the Russian government in its election interference activities. Let me say that again. This, the Mueller report, resulted in this. That for this. Ultimately, the investigation did not establish that the campaign coordinated or conspired with the Russian government in its election-related interference activities. I heard a lot of facts that they didn't tell you, facts that are critical, <laughs> facts that they know completely collapse their case on the facts. Now, you heard a lot from them. You're not going to hear facts from the President's lawyers. They're not going to talk to you about the facts. That's all we've done today. And ask yourself, ask yourself, given the facts you heard today that they didn't tell you, who doesn't want to talk about the facts? Who doesn't want to talk about the facts? The American people paid a lot of money for those facts. They paid a lot of money for this investigation. And they didn't bother to tell you. Ask yourself why. If they don't want to be fair to the President, at least out of respect for all of you, they should be fair to you. They should tell you these things. And when they don't tell you these things, it means something. So think about that. Impeachment shouldn't be a shell game. They should give you the facts. Each one of these six facts, standing alone, is enough to sink the Democrats' case. Combined, they establish what we've known since the beginning. The President did absolutely nothing wrong. 
The Democrats' allegation that the President engaged in a quid pro quo is unfounded and contrary to the facts. The truth is simple, and it's right before our eyes. The President was at all times acting in our national interest and pursuant to his oath of office. I want to touch on one uh, last point before I yield to one of my colleagues. And that relates to the whistleblower. The whistleblower who we haven't heard that much about, who started all of this. The whistleblower we know from the letter that the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community sent that he thought that the whistleblower had political bias. We don't know exactly what the political bias was because the Inspector General testified in the House committees in an executive session, and that transcript is still secret. It wasn't transmitted up to the House Judiciary Committee. We haven't seen it. We don't know what's in it. We don't know what he was asked and what he revealed about the whistleblower. Now, you would think that before going forward with an impeachment proceeding against the President of the United States, that you would want to find out something about the complainant that had started all of it. Because motivations, bias, reasons for wanting to bring this complaint could be relevant. But there wasn't any inquiry into that. Recent reports, public reports, suggest that potentially the whistleblower was an intelligence community staffer who worked with then Vice President Biden on Ukraine matters, which, if true, would suggest an even greater reason for wanting to know about potential bias or motive for the whistleblower. And at first, when things started, it seemed like everyone agreed that we should hear from the whistleblower, including Manager Schiff. I think we have what he said. But yes, we would love to talk directly with the whistleblower. We'll get the unfiltered testimony of that whistleblower. We don't need the whistleblower. What changed? At first, Manager Schiff agreed we should hear the unfiltered testimony from the whistleblower. But then he changed his mind. 